Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna look at how to create 3D golden dust particles like what you're seeing right here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have a look. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to bring Fusion Composition Clip into our timeline. I'm going to bump up the duration to about 10 seconds instead of the default five seconds. And uh, then let's take it uh, directly to the Fusion page. The first thing we're going to do here is to build our 3D scene and we're going to do that by bringing an image plane node and also a camera node and we're going to connect the two via a merge 3D node. Now once that is done, we're also going to bring a render node. This way we're going to be able to see our actual output. So now if we go ahead and bring the merge 3D node into the viewer, we can now see our 3D scene now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is to bring the camera away from image plane and our particle is going to sit uh, kind of in between the camera and also the, uh, the image plane. And we're also going to change the color of the image plane from white to black. This is going to create a better contrast. And now we're ready to build our particles and we're going to start doing that by bringing a P emitter node and also a P render node. So make sure to connect the two and then we're going to connect our P render node to merge 3D. So now if we look at our particles, uh, the first thing we're going to fix here is the region of per particles, the regions where all these particles will be generated. Uh, so we're going to bump up the sphere all the way up. And then I'm also going to change the position of the sphere by adjusting the Y offset and the Z offset. This way it's going to sit a little in front of the image plane. So now it's looking OK, uh, but uh, there are still a few things we have to uh, make some changes to, uh, one of which is that the particles themselves, they don't look even close to uh, how I want them to look. So uh, that's what we're going to uh, what we're going to look at next. So now let's come to P emitter and then let's go to style and then uh, under style, we're going to change from point to angon and we're going to choose circular uh, as the angon type. And the first thing we're going to change here is the size because as, as you guys can see, they're just too big right now. Um, so let's just bring down the size a little bit here and then uh, let's look at the output. Uh, we can continue to bring down the size uh, and we're also going to bump up the size variance. This is going to create particles of different sizes for us. Um, so yeah, so this is looking a lot better now. Um, and this is pretty much what we want. We want particles of different sizes rather than just one size um, across the entire screen here. Another thing we're going to do here is to come to P render and then bump up pre generate frames. This will ensure that at frame zero, we will have particles that we would have had at frame 100. So this will give us a more subtle uh, particle appearance uh, compared to, you know, what we had before where we start off with just a few particles. So now the next thing we're going to do is to control the number of particles that we see on the screen. So we're going to do that by coming to controls tab and then bump up number parameter. And then also we're going to increase lifespan of the particles all the way up, change temporal distribution to random. Now you're going to see that first thing is that we have a lot more particles. And on top of that, they stick around for a good amount of time because we have maximized the lifespan, uh, increased it way beyond the duration of the clip. Now, the next thing we're going to do is come into style tab and then uh, adjust the fading a little bit. Now, the idea here is that we want the particles that are being generated each frame to have a more subtle, much smoother appearance than just kind of popping up all of a sudden on the screen. Next, we're going to add some movement to our particles and we're going to do that by bringing in directional force node uh, located under particles and we're going to place it in between P emitter and P render. Now, by default, it's already making some changes to our particles. You see that now the particles are falling in the right direction, but they're falling just way too fast. So we're going to make some changes to the strength parameter. The way the strength parameter works is that if we change it to zero, which is literally where there's no movement, it's not adding any movement to the particles whatsoever. And if we bring it all the way to the left, this is creating a lot of movement, but it's going to make the particles go from the bottom to the top. And if we bring it all the way to the right, this is going to make the particles go from top to the bottom. So what we want really is just bring it back to zero and now we're going to make some changes just ever so slightly, just bring it up ever so slightly, just a little bit. And this is what we're aiming for here. Just particles slowly falling off the screen from top to bottom. So the change is going to be very subtle. 
and we're going to just play with the strength parameter until we get to that desired state. But the idea here, I just want to emphasize that is that is going to be very subtle, uh, very small changes uh, to the strength parameter. All right, so what we're going to do next is to build more particles on top of the ones we already built here. But the difference is that these particles are going to be a lot bigger uh, and they're going to be very subtle. So let's bring in P emitter first, also bring in P render, connect the two, and then make sure that we connect um, P render to merge 3D. So now if you look at our 3D scene here, we have a very similar situation where we have to pop out the region size first of all. So let's do that, bring the sphere size all the way up and then uh, also change the position of the sphere as well so that it's um, sitting in front of the image plane. Now what's different here is that we're going to create our own particles. We're going to come to style and then choose bitmap instead of angon. So now we're going to bring a background node and then we're going to bring a uh, ellipse a masking node on top of the uh, background node. So now you see that we have pretty much created our own particle here. We're going to change the car a color to white and then we're going to uh, pipe this into P emitter. And now if you look at the 3D scene here, you can see that all the particles, these new particles are using that uh, are using that circle we just created using background node. So now the first thing we'll do is to bring down the size. They're just way too big right now. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, do that. So bring the size down a little. Uh, if we look at the output, uh, we see that, okay, the size is decent, but we need to also change up the variance, the size variance as well. So bring that up a little bit so that we have some different sizes there. And uh, so, yeah, so that looks looking okay. Now let's adjust the number of particles we see on the screen by coming to controls tab and then bring down the number parameter, bring that like way down to like 0.7. So that's okay. That's looking fine. We're also going to increase lifespan um, just a little bit here. And then we're going to change temporal distribution to random. So now if we uh, have a look at what we have so far, guys, it's in terms of the number of particles, I think this is fine. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is to come to uh, P render do very much what we did earlier. We're going to uh, pre-populate the particles at frame zero. So let's bring up pre-generate frames. And uh, now we're going to come back to PM emitter and then under style, we're adding some fading and fade out effect to our particles. So they're going to, when they pop up on the screen, it's going to be very smooth, uh, very subtle. So that's looking good. And uh, now, um, yeah, so this is looking good. So next, what we're gonna do is to come to the ellipse node, actually the ellipse uh, masking node. And now in the ellipse masking node, we're going to bring down the level parameter. Now this, as you see now, is going to create some transparency to the particle and also really tune down the look of it. So this is what's going to make the particle, make these, these sets of particles look more subtle compared to the smaller ones in the background. Now, one last thing we need to do is to add some movement to the particles. And we're gonna do that by once again, bringing in directional force. Uh, and we're going to pretty much repeat what we did earlier. Uh, we're going to bring down strength to zero first, and then we're just going to make some minor changes to it. Just bump it up ever so slightly. So now you're gonna see that these bigger particles are just kind of hanging in the air. Uh, it's very nice, it's looking very, very good. Um, but if you think they are still falling way too fast, we can just continue to bring this uh, strength uh, parameter down uh, ever so slightly, just a little bit, right? Just minor adjustments here and there. Uh, that's going to make a big difference um, to to this. So, uh, so this is yeah. So this is looking good, guys. Um, so the good news is that we're pretty much done with particles at this point. Uh, but what we have to do now is to add some lighting to our 3D scene, and we're going to do that by bringing point light under 3D. Point light very much functions like light bulb, um, so I think it's going to work really good for this particular scene here. And we're going to bring the light away from the image plane first. But one thing you're going to notice is that we don't see the lights. We don't see any lights at all. So we're going to have to right click the viewer and under 3D option, click lighting. So once we click it, now we're seeing lights. Uh, so that's great. And if we look at our output, we also don't see lights here either. Um, so what we have to do is to click render node and then enable lighting under lighting. Uh, so now we're seeing lights not only in the output, but also in the 3D scene. Now let's come to point light and go to transform tab. We're going to adjust the position of the light furthermore. So we're going to bring up the Y parameter, bring up the light. 
Now, if you look at the output, uh, the idea here is that I want the bright point of the light to be at the top of the screen. So we're going to bring the white parameter up a little bit more here. So let's do that. And also I want bigger spread. So we're going to adjust the Z parameter too. So now we look at the output. Um, this is looking a lot better. Um, yeah, this is looking good. So um, this is everything's kind of coming together slowly. Uh, we can also change the color uh, of the light by coming to controls tab and then change the color to something warm here. So this is really going to tie everything together. Uh, and another thing we can do is change the decay type of the light. So this is going to control how the light falls off. So if we change it to linear and if we change the decay rate, you guys will see that the center is now like super bright, right? And then as it spreads out, it's going to get much darker. So this is a really good effect. And I think that uh, we're going to stick with this for now. All right, guys, we're almost there. So the last thing we're going to do is to fine tune this effect by bringing rays under effect. So let's connect that to render. And then if we look at it right now, the first thing we have to do is to change the direction of the light rays by going to center parameter and changing Y. So this way, the light rays will be pointing downwards rather than just all over the place. Now we're going to bring down exposure. This controls the intensity of the light rays. We don't need it to be that intense. And this we'll see right away will reduce that super bright spot you see you saw earlier in the middle. Now we're going to bring down decay parameter as well. Now decay controls kind of how the light rays falls off the, 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 the length of the light rays. So if we bring that down, you're going to see that now it's going to become this very long streaky light rays and they're going to be a lot more subtle which is what we're looking for and we're also going to change the weight parameter uh, just a little bit in case that the light rays are too light too subtle this will just make it uh, more visible and we're also going to change the threshold which controls at what luminance uh, you know we're going to see light rays um, but uh, uh, with this one i really just it's just going to be some minor change, minor adjustment. Uh, it will it will do the job. So if I look at uh, if you look at the output, guys, right now it's looking really good. This is uh, this is pretty much it. Um, so everything is, guys, is is subtle. It's very subtle. It's all about subtlety. The particle movement is subtle. The light rays are subtle. Uh, so that's really the idea here. Um, okay. So at this point, uh, what we can do is just to bring this back to the edit. Oh, actually, sorry, guys. Let's go back to the fusion page. Uh, make sure we connect it uh, to media out one first and then uh yeah let's come back to the edit page and uh, let it render and uh, have a look at the output so guys this is looking really good um yeah i really like it um so i hope guys you know by looking at how this is all put together uh, you guys can learn something from it uh from this and uh, yeah i hope it helps and uh, i will see you next time